10 things I learned from spending one year in dialysis. So let me start off. Uh, I am Logan, I'm a nurse. I've been a paramedic for nine years, a nurse for four years. I've worked pre-hospital, ER, and then now dialysis. So if you're sitting out there considering, should I go in dialysis? Let me give you 10 things that I learned from spending one year in it. First, I will be honest with you, the pay is amazing. So I live here in Memphis, Tennessee. The starting pay for a new nurse is like 25, 26, 27, 24, depending on where you go dollars an hour. Dialysis, 30, 35. I think 35 is about the top out. So like I came in with some experience, they paid me for my experience, I got 35 from the jump. And that's all as your base pay. That doesn't include any shift diffs or incentives to get in. Number two, as the RN, you are going to be not only the RN in charge of direct patient care, you're also gonna be the charge nurse and the manager. So you're gonna to have to balance all of these different kinds of roles that you didn't have to do in hospital or in another setting in the clinic. So like, you're running breaks all the time. You're setting the schedule. You're making sure the water gets checked. You're making sure the labs are up to date and drawn when they should be. It's a lot more on your plate because of the less amount of people that are there. Cause it's gonna be you, the nurse, and then other patient care techs, which are unlicensed professionals that are doing, I'm not going to say the majority of the work, but they're going to be doing all the grunt work and you have to pick up the slack. So like if they're not doing what they need to be, you are now that role. That includes everything in the clinic because you are the judge, the jury, and the executioner as the RN. Number three, the schedule is amazing. I'm going to be honest. Like the schedule is one of the best parts about working in a dialysis clinic. So like in the hospital, you're gonna be working 12s. You might be working at dialysis clinic, but your 12s could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or it could be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or it could be Sunday, off Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. It can be any kind of rotation because the hospital is open 24 seven. That is not what a dialysis clinic is. You will be there on a more regular schedule than you will be in the hospital because they're open Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the heavy days. And usually a lot of them aren't open Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you're off every Sunday. So like if you like going to church, this is the place to be. It is a more set schedule. Number four, when you're in a dialysis clinic, there are no redundancies. And you're like, Logan, what do you mean by that? Well, if it snows or if it ices, there's things that happen in the back of the dialysis clinic that doesn't happen in a hospital. So like to run dialysis, you have to have really, really clean water to mix with the chemicals, to make the dialysate, to actually clean the blood. To clean that water, it has to pass through multiple filters, uh, multiple different chemical treatments, but the last one's called an RO filter. The RO filter is reverse osmosis, and if the water's too cold, like on a really cold snowy day here in Memphis, it can't actually, it's like thick. It's like the water's thick, so it can't really pass through the filter as well as it did before, so it takes longer. So you may not have water pressure good enough to run the entire clinic. That doesn't include times that the city's working on the water because if they're working on the water, they'll put extra chlorine in there and that chlorine comes through your system and chlorine will kill people. So it'll set off all these alarms and then you have to quit dialysis for the day. There's no redundancies for that. If the power's out, there's not a generator at your dialysis clinic like there is the hospital. So you may run a simple 12 chair clinic. You've got two shifts, that's 24 people. Where are those 24 people going to go? They usually just don't go to the hospital because there's not enough room for them and they don't want to deal with the hospital. But there is no redundancy built in. If something breaks or goes down, there's one redundancy and that's the there's two sets of carbon filters in every place to make sure you get out all of the chlorine. Other than that, if something goes down or something breaks, generally there's not a backup plan. Number five you will get to know your patients. Unlike any other hospital setting where, I mean, maybe like some med surge floors where you actually get to take care of them for multiple days in a row, but you're not there every time they're there because they're gonna be admitted the entire time. This, you will be there every time they're there and you'll be able to build up that relationship. So Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, when you're working at that clinic, you're gonna see Mr. George, whoever, whoever, whoever it is, make up a name, Ralph. You're gonna see Ralph. And Ralph's going to say, how are you doing? And they're going to talk about their day. And then you're going to get the follow-up the Tuesday or the Wednesday, then the follow-up to Friday. And you're going to do this for weeks, for months, for years. You will get to know your patients on a real, real level. Whether you want to or not, that's a real fact about this. So if that's not what you're looking for, this may not be it. Number six, six, you will stop getting paid for what you know and start getting paid for what you do. So in the ER, on the ambulance, 
in the hospital, you get more paid for what you know. So like, can you triage? Did you recognize the signs and symptoms? How did you assess? Did you hear those lung sounds correctly? It's a very, it's, stre it's stressful in the hospital, but it's brain intensive as well because you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to do things. It's not always the same thing over and over again. It's the exact opposite in dialysis. It's almost going to be the same thing over and over and over. So it turns from a situation where you have to think about what you're going to do. You have to assess the patient, or you have to assess the patient, think about what you're going to do, plan it out, and then enact that plan. That's your in-hospital role. In the dialysis clinic, it's legitimately, we know what we're going to do. We know when they're going to get here. We know what we have to do. So we try to cram as much as we can in and then try to accomplish all the stuff we can cram in because their goal, the clinic, is to get the most work out of you for the same amount of money. So instead of like the hospital tr almost reacting in the ER sense and just trying to make things happen, here they cram it all in on the front end and you just have to eat it. You just have to take it and you have to go, 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 go. So you stop getting paid for actually thinking and planning. You only get paid for the doing because there's not much thinking and planning. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's why, like, my instructor, not instructor, but, like, the person that precepted me in dialysis, she always called herself dialysis dumb. She's dialysis dumb is what she would say. And, you know, I always said, hey, girl, don't say that about yourself. But now I'm like, yeah, I get it. There's really, there's not much you get to know. Along with that, when you're that nurse in that building, there's not a nephrologist there all the time. Your manager's not there all the time. Generally, like, out of the day... There's probably like four hours where there's someone you can lean on. If you don't know, there's like four hours a day that someone's there that could actually help if they help, but probably not. Number seven, there is no off stage. And when I say off stage, that's like, you know, you've got your patient in the room, you go in there and you have to interact with the patient. Well, then you can come out to your desk and you can chart, right? Or you got, uh, you're not always in the eyes of the patient. That's the thing. When you're in the hospital, you're not always in the eyes of the patient. When you're in the clinic, when you're on that floor, that's, you're always there. Every single patient can see you 24 seven unless you step off the floor and you can't chart off the floor. You can't pull up any meds off the floor. You can only take a break off the floor. So all that time that you spend charting and doing other stuff, you check, you check your phone, every single patient in that clinic can see you. So there is no moment to get it together before you go in there and do something. You're just always on when you're in that clinic. Number eight, you will learn more about running a clinic than you ever wanted to know. You're going to learn more. And now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Now, I'm going to be honest and say that it has been a good for me because I'm moving into a nurse practitioner role in the next two years if I pass everything. So I needed that experience of what it's like to really run a clinic. So like, I'm calling in medications to Walgreens. I've never done that before. I have no had no idea how hard it was or what to do or what to what numbers to call or who I should be calling, how to speed up the process. You're making appointments. You're managing this patient's care across multiple disciplines that aren't in your hospital. So like in the hospital, you got the phone numbers you can call. There you have to figure it all out. You have to coordinate from almost it feels like a bystander position. I'm like, hey, I'm the nurse for this patient at a dialysis clinic. I'm trying to organize their PCP because I can hear the uh, the crackles in their chest. I'm sh I can see them coughing, the sputum. I'm sure they have pneumonia, but now we have to get them treated because we don't do that here. And you can't just let it sit. So you learn what it's like to actually be in a clinic setting. And in that clinic setting, you don't have the resources you have in the hospital, which sounds, yeah, everyone knows that, right? You don't have your x-ray. You don't have your CT. You don't have a monitor in a dialysis clinic. Let me say that again. You don't have a monitor. You don't have all of your advanced care, advanced care life support stuff. I have an AED. I don't have any cardiac epi. I don't have any, any cardiac drugs I don't have. I do have like EpiPens, sugar, and that's it. Number nine, you will deal with more blood than you ever have in your entire life. Like, just the pure amount of blood. Because what happens, we've got 17 chairs in our clinic right now. There is 17 people that's getting their blood turned over 60 to 80 times. So every drop of blood in their body is getting rotated, 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 60 to 70 times over three and a half, four, three hours, okay? Three to four hours of time. When we remove those needles, they bleed a lot. These accesses are highly vascular because they have to be able to handle a 400 ml a minute blood flow rate. 
It's a lot. It really is. And then sometimes people bleed after they get up. They take the gall or they put their galls on, they walk, start walking out and just blood's pouring out. Blood's over there. Blood's all over the, the chair. Blood's everywhere. Blood just gets everywhere all the time. It's more blood than I thought possible. And I came from real deal trauma, real deal trauma. But I guess it's the consistency of the blood in the clinic that gets me. It's like, it's always bloody. It's always bloody. It's not like, oh, I had a bloody day today. It's always bloody. The final number 10, something that's really cool about dialysis, you turn the lights off at night. And you're like, well, that makes sense. It's a clinic. But if you've worked the hospital, when you come back to the hospital, the hospital is running the entire time. It doesn't stop. It never stops at the hospital. So in the clinic, when you turn off the lights and you leave, nothing happened the night before. There is no, hey, what happened? Hey, did anything change? Hey, did, whoa, whoa, wow, there's a, there, that crazy thing happened last night? That doesn't exist in a dialysis clinic. So your team that you leave with is the team you show up with. You can build those relationships better in the clinic because there is no experience that happened without you there because you're going to be there for all of it. It's also a downside. You will be there for anything good and bad that happens. So the last thing I'm going to say, if you ask me, Logan, should I go be a dialysis nurse? So my question is going to be for you. Do you want to in stay in a clinic setting? Is that something that you want to do? Because if it's not, never will I recommend you to go to dialysis because, or if you don't want to stay in dialysis because it's a very limiting setting. I would say like, go do some med surge, go do some OR, go do something that you're going to see more of. ER is near and dear to my heart. You're going to see everything and you're going to be able to bag your way out of every situation. I don't know if I can recommend dialysis for everyone, but there are certain situations that it's good for. If you live in a rural setting, dialysis pays more and there's dialysis clinics everywhere. So I wouldn't discount it, but I don't necessarily, I don't think I would say go for dialysis. It's not my kit and caboodle. I've done it for a year. Now I'm looking at other options, but it is there and it is a good job. And that's the whole thing about nursing, right? You still get to, it doesn't matter what you do as a nurse. You still get to take care of people and you still get paid well. That's the whole kit and caboodle. So take that with a grain of salt. Make sure you like this video, share it, and always subscribe to the channel, guys. Remember. Always keep your corn on the comm. Logan out.